Hey folks, have you ever wondered what would happen if you tried layering manure under cardboard in your garden soil? Well, stick around, because you might just be surprised by the results. Soil improvement is really the heartbeat of every successful garden. Without healthy soil, no amount of watering, fertilizing, or planting will give you the harvest you hope for. Here at Soil and Crop Central, we dig deep into methods that are natural, effective, and proven to make your soil thrive. Among these, one technique stands out for both its simplicity and its power, layering manure under cardboard mulch. What looks like two ordinary waste materials becomes in truth a living engine of fertility. Let's uncover exactly what happens beneath the surface, why it works so well, and how you can use it to transform your own garden. Why manure and cardboard together change everything. On its own, cardboard is already a useful tool in the garden. It suppresses weeds by blocking sunlight, it slows evaporation, and it creates a stable environment for soil life. However, it breaks down slowly and offers little direct nutrition to plants. Manure, on the other hand, is the opposite. It is rich in nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium, magnesium, and countless beneficial microbes. Fresh manure, however, can lose nutrients quickly when left exposed. Ammonia gases escape into the air, heavy rains can leach away soluble nutrients, and the strong odor can make garden work less pleasant. The magic begins when you combine them. The cardboard shields the manure, locking in nitrogen that would otherwise be lost. It prevents leaching from rainfall and maintains the damp, protected environment that microbes crave. Together, they mimic the natural layering of leaves and animal droppings on a forest floor, building fertile humus without a gardener lifting a spade. The first few weeks, the underground awakening, the moment you spread manure on your soil and cover it with a solid layer of cardboard, an invisible transformation begins. Billions of bacteria surge into action, feeding on the simple sugars and proteins within the manure. Their activity produces a gentle heat, not the blazing temperatures of a compost pile, but enough to accelerate decomposition. At the same time, fungal threads begin weaving through the cardboard above and the manure below. These fungi specialize in breaking down cellulose, the tough fibers that make up cardboard. As they do so, they knit soil particles together into aggregates that improve structure and drainage. The cardboard itself plays a quiet but crucial role. By holding in moisture it creates a dark, stable microclimate that favors aerobic decomposition. Without this balance, the manure could easily rot into a slimy, anaerobic mess. Within just a week or two, the manure changes noticeably. Instead of looking raw and smelling sharp, it becomes darker, crumbly, and rich with the earthy scent gardeners recognize as the smell of living soil. Scientists often call this stage the priming effect. The addition of fresh organic matter does not only feed microbes directly, but also wakes them up to digest older organic matter already present in the soil, multiplying fertility beyond the manure itself. By the second month something pretty remarkable happens, the arrival of earthworms. As decomposition advances, earthworms arrive. Drawn by the scent of breaking down manure, they chew through softened patches of cardboard and slip into the protected layer beneath. Their feeding is one of the most important steps in the transformation. As they consume the mixture of manure and cardboard, they digest it and release it in the form of worm castings. These castings are uh, just packed with plant-available nutrients and beneficial microbes, they even contain natural growth hormones that, you know, stimulate stronger roots. Worms do more than just fertilize. As they tunnel through the soil, they create these tiny channels that let water drain freely and air circulate, which is pretty important. This, uh, loosens compacted ground and makes it easier for plant roots to spread out, 
They also carry nutrients deeper into the soil profile, protecting them from being washed away. In a garden bed treated this way, the worms become a silent workforce, tilling, feeding, and aerating the soil day and night without a single drop of gasoline or a minute of backbreaking labor. Three months later, a new soil horizon. By the 90-day mark, what you find under the cardboard hardly resembles the materials you started with. The manure has matured into humus, a dark, crumbly, sponge-like material that gardeners often call black gold. Ah, humus, it's truly invaluable. You see, it holds on to nutrients and releases them slowly. This prevents waste and ensures a steady fertility that can last for months, even years. Plus, it improves the soil texture by binding particles into soft crumbs. These crumbs resist erosion and compaction, making for a healthier soil environment. The cardboard, it's no longer just a stiff sheet, instead it transforms into a soft, spongy mat. It's threaded with fungal hyphae and riddled with worm tunnels. Quite the transformation, wouldn't you say? Over time, it blends into the soil completely, much like fallen leaves on a forest floor. Together, manure and cardboard have created a brand new soil horizon. It's where the mineral layer below and the organic layer above merge into something stronger, richer, and more alive. Amazing, isn't it? The smell is fresh and earthy and, you know, roots move easily through the crumbly texture. The soil, well, it begins to look like a fertile field rather than tired dirt. The lasting benefits of this simple method are, honestly, pretty impressive. Once established, the effects of layering manure under cardboard extend far beyond just one growing season. The soil structure becomes stronger and more resilient, making your garden healthier year after year. Aggregates formed by fungal threads and worm tunnels improve drainage while also helping the soil hold moisture during drought. Nutrients are banked in the humus, no longer lost to rain or evaporation, but instead stored safely until plants need them. The microbial community also grows more diverse and active, which naturally suppresses disease. Beneficial organisms outcompete harmful ones, reducing the likelihood of plant infections. At the same time, the cardboard mulch continues to smother weeds effectively, freeing you from the endless cycle of hand-pulling or hoeing. Watering needs also decline since moisture stays trapped beneath the protective layer. For gardeners of all ages, but especially for seniors, these benefits translate into less strain, less expense, and more results. The soil begins to feed itself, the weeds surrender, and your time in the garden becomes more about enjoyment and harvest than about constant labor. So, let's talk about how to apply this method correctly. Timing is everything. The best moment to apply fresh manure beneath cardboard is in the fall, before winter sets in. This gives microbes and worms months to work, while the natural cycles of rain, snow, and freeze-thaw help soften the layers. By spring, the manure will have mellowed, the cardboard will have broken down, and your beds will be ready for planting. Always use plain brown corrugated cardboard. Avoid glossy coatings, colored inks, or tape, as these can introduce unwanted chemicals. Overlap the edges generously to prevent weeds from sneaking through. If your soil is heavy clay, poke drainage holes in the cardboard or add a coarse mulch such as straw on top to keep the system aerobic. If you're working with manure that is especially hot such as chicken manure, If you are working with manure that is especially hot, such as chicken manure, it's best to give the soil extra time before planting tender seedlings. For gardeners who wish to accelerate the process, a simple compost tea can be poured directly over the cardboard to inoculate it with active microbes. To make this, dilute one part finished compost with five parts water. So, for example, one liter of compost in five liters of water. Stir well and pour evenly across the surface before mulching. 
This infusion helps jumpstart microbial activity and speeds decomposition. Why this method reflects the wisdom of nature. What makes this practice so powerful is that it mirrors the cycles of the natural world. You know, in a forest, no one tills the ground, spreads fertilizer, or sprays chemicals. Leaves fall, animals leave their droppings, and the soil slowly grows richer year after year. By layering manure under cardboard, we are imitating that very process, but in a way that is controlled and concentrated for our gardens. Instead of fighting against nature with machines and chemicals, this approach invites the natural workforce, worms, fungi, bacteria, and thyme, to do the work for us. The result is not only better soil but also a more peaceful and enjoyable relationship with the land. Conclusion At Soil and Crop Central, we believe the best gardening methods are those that are simple, sustainable, and effective. Layering manure under cardboard mulch checks every box. In just a few months it transforms raw waste into fertile humus, calls in an army of earthworms, locks in nutrients, and creates soil that is soft, balanced, and alive. If you are looking for a way to rejuvenate tired beds, reduce weeds and watering, and let nature carry more of the workload, this is the method to try. It's affordable, it's powerful, and it turns two humble materials that most folks usually throw away into a foundation for abundance. So, the next time you come across a pile of manure or maybe a stack of cardboard boxes, don't just overlook them. Lay them down, step back, and let nature work its quiet magic. Your plants are going to thrive, your harvest will get better, and your soil will just keep improving year after year. If you found this guide helpful, be sure to subscribe to Soil and Crop Central and, you know, share this resource with other gardeners. Together, we can grow smarter, not harder, and keep building healthy soil for generations to come.